Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, I have Mr. Christian Watson, spokesperson for Color Us United and host of the Pensive Politics Podcast. Christian, good day. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Dr. Richie. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about critical race theory, um, but we're going to talk about it, debate it here on the program. What are your thoughts about critical race theory and your um, alleged connection that it has to um, education in America, K through 12? So, critical race theory just Putting it very simply, because there are a lot of different definitions that a lot of people like to throw out. But critical race theory, as I best understand it, is a movement of a collection of academics who work in an interdisciplinary fashion to interrogate the role that they believe white supremacy and oppression has had and still continues to have in American society. And so essentially, it's based on a few key precepts. Number one, that white supremacy is a part of the definition of America's institutions. Uh, number two, that the impacts of white supremacy, far from any sort of individual instance of white supremacy, are still impacting and hurting black Americans today. And number three, you have to engage those impacts in a critical way, which means as they would say, or at least as they said in the critical race through the key writings, you have to engage critically, you have to engage in a sort of activist way, especially in the classroom and abroad in political society as well. And so this is really being pushed in education, or at least many of these principles, I should probably say, are being pushed in education by the 1619 Project. Now, when many folks hear this, they're like, well, this is nonsense, it's fear mongering, but it's not. Look at what Nicole Hannah Jones has said in the essays that are within the 1619 Project curriculum and in her own personal statements. She said that slavery is foundational to America, that the the editor for New York Magazine actually said that he wants to reframe history um, to a black narrative, which puts slavery at the sort of forefront and the emphasis of what America is about. I mean, there are plenty other essays in the curriculum that Mm -hmm. kind of do indict America's moral character. So I think that critical race theory principles are most certainly being used in a way that I think is not really appropriate for the classroom. So let me go back to your original definition and understanding of critical race theory because you go to some degree and then you don't go to the rest. Um, Critical race theory does not mandate that you um, become an activist. That's not part of the lexicon of the theory. Um, The theory itself basically says that Due to the origin of how we started as a country, we have these biases that are built into policies, institutions, statutes, even the Constitution. Remember, the Constitution said at one point we were three fifths of a person. The Declaration of Independence said that Native Americans are savages in the language of the Declaration of Independence. And then there are current modern structures that exhibit this same racial dynamic where the disparity is connected directly statistically to a race variable. And you have to deconstruct that model, you have to reverse engineer that model and figure out where in the policy is it getting it wrong. Now, when you talk about K through 12 education, brother, you are well aware that critical race theory is not taught in K through 12 education, you know that. Well, uh, as I said, no one's reading Delgado, no one's reading Crenshaw, but I'm saying that critical pedagogy is a method that is being endorsed, especially by the curriculum of the 1619 Project to teach certain concepts. I think that's a self-evident fact. Okay, so let me correct you on something, it's pedagogy. And the (laughs) pedagogy that's being taught, uh, that's an educational style, that's a method of teaching. So a theory is not really pedagogy, it's your method of connection. Well, that, oh, go ahead. Well, well, so so the the theory itself is mm-hmm. implemented. So pedagogy is simply the way that the theory is implemented in the classroom. So okay. even though critical race so, theory, so itself, explain that to me. Explain how do you make it critical race theory when it's not critical race theory that's being taught? How do you well, connect again, it? To? I think you're kind. Of, I think you're kind of moving the goalpost here, Dr. Rich, respectively, because I yeah. never claim that critical race theory itself, Delgado, Stefanik, Mary Matsuda, you know, uh, Crenshaw, they were being taught to K through 12 people, because they're not. I'm saying that the methodology and the principles of critical race theory are being taught, at least in the 1619 Project and across America. You and I think that's that you a very. Were, you say that you were a victim of critical race theory. I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when were you a victim of critical race theory? So again, when I when I so again, I was using critical race theory as a proxy for its methodology. And but that's principle. not what you said. You said you were a victim. I read it, yep. brother. I did the research on you. You I said guess. you were a victim of critical and race I, theory. And I was when? quite clear about what I meant. Yes, I was quite clear about what I meant. So for when, example, when were you a victim? I partook in collegiate debate. And collegiate debate, there's a few kinds of collegiate debate. There's policy debate, there's national parliamentary debate, and there's other kinds, there's British parliamentary debate. And in almost all of the debates, particularly in policy and in national parliamentary debate, a lot of people use critical race theory arguments. Not only that, but many of the debate judges themselves are not only sympathetic, but formally critical debaters. It's not like critical race theory is simply being used sparingly by people as a wide array of arguments. No, critical race theory actually informs the structure of collegiate debate, whether it's terms like critique or what have you. Crenshaw has been quoted several times, Derek Bell on the idea of sort of Afro pessimism. That's been quoted several times. Also, excuse me, Frank Wonderson and the idea of Afro pessimism. That's been quoted several times. So yeah, and, and because of those ideas that were dominant, I was not really accepted and allowed to be in collegiate debate by people. Well, I was allowed, but I wasn't really accepted by folks. And a lot of my arguments were considered to be offensive and ignoring lived experience. And lived experience being the core function of actually what critical race theorists believe. If you look at words that wound, Matsuda, Crenshaw, and, and Stefanik, and all of them say in their section where they define critical race theory, that we use lived experience as a means of disrupting the narrative that ignores you know, black folks and their experiences. So yeah, Let me I was you. kind of a victim. Let me help you. First of all, brother, you are not a victim of critical race theory. Um, critical race theory is a theoretical and an advanced theoretical framework that poses a question and a framework for analysis. Nobody is a victim of that whatsoever. And you learned it in the right context. If you were engaged in critical debate in, in a collegiate atmosphere, that is the right atmosphere. That is the right societal construct in order to learn an advanced theoretical framework, no matter what that framework may be. But all theoretical frameworks pose a question and a concept for analysis. I know you're well aware of that. You are no victim, sir. Let me bring to your attention um, some elements in modern society that I would like you to answer without using critical race theory. Okay, let's do that. Very well. Um, Four years of survey data shows that black students represent only 15% of total US students enrolled in public education. But they make up 35% of students suspended once, 44% of students suspended more than once, and 36% of students expelled. That's from the US Department of Education. They also found in their research that this disparity is not explained by more frequent or more serious misbehavior by other of students, meaning their behavior was comparable to white students. However, their penalty was much more severe. Let me read you another one. Uh, and, and by the way, I like to always source my data. You can find that US Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. Uh, the New York, uh, New York City uh, police officers were surveyed uh, based on their stops. This was a survey after the fact. So this is not a lived experience survey. This is an actual data analytical survey. Uh, the data analytical survey showed that New York City 88% of police stops involve black and Latinx people, while 10% involve white people. Of those stops, 70% were completely innocent. So the data doesn't even justify them targeting black and brown individuals. Another one, and you can find that information, New York Civil Liberties Union, stop and fist data. Black women are three to four times more likely to experience a pregnancy related death than white women, even at similar levels of income and education and health. You can find that data, the National Partnership of Women, Families, uh, Women, uh, Families uh, Study. The next one, on average, black men in the US receive sentences that are 19.1% longer than those of white men convicted of the very same crime. You mean to tell me that I get 20% more time if I'm a black man convicted in America than my white counterparts and we are convicted of the same exact crime? Uh, there's another one, on average, uh, in the US, black individuals are twice as likely to be unemployed as white individuals with the same exact background as their white counterparts. That's another data stat, you can find that at the Poverty Action Lab. Um, I'll give you one more. One study found that job resumes with traditionally white sounding names received 50% more callbacks than those with black sounding names. And they, they did this over and over again. They submitted the same education, the same experience, changed the name, from Abdul to, to uh, John, 
and all of a sudden companies started calling them back. Sir, those are dynamics of systemic bias, uh, implicit or hyper aggressive racism that must be examined. Tell me how do you back engineer that? How do you how do you examine it without the use of critical race theory? Well, well, first of all, so critical race theory, let's be clear about what it is, as, as we have been doing with the Serpicon's conversation. It is indeed a framework which would look at all of those things. And it wouldn't actually, what you're doing, Dr. Rich, you're actually kind of trying to interrogate a little bit. And words that wound, all of the critical race theorists, particularly Matsuda and Crenshaw and all of them who wrote that book, they're very clear that they actually presume that all racial disparities must be must have racist outcomes. And there is a conversation to be had about that, but it is not it is not a conversation that can be scientifically approached if we are assuming that all racial disparities or all disparities you know in any any area must be racist because they are adjacent to racism. This is the flaw that I think Kendi makes not to be an anti-racist. But to answer a few of your examples, for example, on the education, the education thing where black kids are punished punished more at public school. Again, I think that if we look at something that is black adjacent and all the Automatically say this is anti-black. We're endeavoring in a sort of an association fallacy. Well, tell me if what you do you think at, it is? If you look at charter schools, for example, if you look at charter schools, many charter schools, black Americans actually outperform their public school peers, whether it's in college readiness, whether it's in subject readiness, and, and also whether it's in conduct as well. But when you have people pushing charter schools and more broadly school choice in certain areas like Chicago, what happened in Chicago was the superintendent of, 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 of some of the schools and the teachers unions actually went against it. You know, you're trapping black youth into a certain environment. So you should probably, instead of just looking at race as the only factor, consider, okay, how does that particular school treat certain kinds of infractions? And how might that impact you know, what that individual is doing? How is that individual's home life? All I'm saying is that it's important in any given situation, not to simply look at the surface, but to do what Plato said and inquire and interrogate the relationship between knowledge and opinion and try to get as close to knowledge as possible. Critical race theory does not do that because critical race theory, as they said in words that won't, presumes that certain things are true without investigating them. And in my opinion, going back to the classroom, that kind of mentality has no room in a system that is meant to educate people, to mold the man, mold the woman as the ancients would think in, in a way that is gonna prepare them for life. Brother, you said a whole lot without saying much at all. So let me help you here. Which of my claims do you take issue with? Well, the fact that you never really got to the core of how do you reverse engineer the obvious disparities that are connected to race that I just posed to you? Well, you, you cannot I, tell I, me. I, Go I, ahead. Dr. Rishi, I must respectfully disagree, sir. I did. I told you explicitly that we have to look at these things through a multifaceted lens and not okay, through a reductive, simplistic. Tell well, me I just, I, just I, I just gave you several examples as it related to the okay. school, the, the school thing. There are many different things that could account for the disparities in punishing, and in charter schools, in, in many charter schools, like those what? disparities just, name, just don't just exist. Just name a few, brother. I, I mentioned, I mentioned family life. How does that particular school handle infractions? It does not have to be okay. entirely linked to racist practices. But the problem okay. is, the problem is, Dr. Ritchie, critical race yeah. theory likes to see racism in terms of impact, not in terms of intent or value, or to the extent that intent or value mean anything. This is Kenny's definition. Well, let me they, ask you they this. must be related with impact. Let me ask you this. Do you think that a New York City police officer or the New York City Police Department pulling over 88% of the individuals who are black and brown, um, a huge disparity in how they pull over uh, people and not even uh, uh, coming up with the result of more people being arrested. 70% are completely innocent of anything. Do you not think that is systemic? You think there's something else there? Well, so I think two things can be true at once. You could have a systemic problem without okay. the problem being necessarily racist. But it doesn't mean it's not racist. Make. But, but well, let, let me, well, let me well, understand Dr. what you're Rich, saying. You're kind of you moving don't, the goalposts. No, there. brother, brother, you say it doesn't necessarily mean that it's racist, which no, means you have left the door open for the fact that it could absolutely be racist. Well, okay. Uh, well, 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 perhaps, but we shouldn't jump to that conclusion. That's my Why? point. The point is because the Why kind of would the data, when the are, data shows the sir. disparity based on race? Why would you not, and it's not jumping to a conclusion, it's interpreting the data. Why would you not say, listen, if, if three to four times black women who are pregnant experience a pregnancy related death more so than white women with similar background, income, education and health. Why would you not say, listen, we need to make sure we take a closer look 
and how we're treating black women in this industry. Why would you not make that conclusion based on well, the data? Well, well, again, I think our phrasing is very important. I, I think sometimes using the word we and how we are treating people kind of puts everyone on the hook. When if this is a racist problem, as you seem to believe it is, we should be looking for the actual people who are causing the problem. But back to the broader point, I do want to interrogate and investigate all of these issues. But I want to do so through a lens that is not simplistic and presumptive as critical race theory would but have I would us love do. For you to present so another back, back. One. I'm, I'm I, asking I, I, you, brother. Present another lens. Listen, critical race theory says, okay, a whole lot of bad stuff as far as disparities that happen, it, it can be traced back to a racist or racial core. And we have to check those things inside of our policies. You would admit that we have policies that unfairly penalize individuals of color more so than other groups. Would you not agree that we have policies like that? So there are disparate, what you're asking, are there disparities in data? Absolutely, there's a disparities in data, but we have to investigate the disparities. You know, Emerson made it very clear, we have to investigate what goodness is. We have to see why what is, is. And I think just taking a very surface level prima facie look at the data and saying, hey, this is a racial disparity. Ergo, it must be but racist. But it is by fact. Denies, <laughs> deny, well, 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 facts are important, sir, which is what, and I want right. to understand so, the facts. So you the have fact to is, let me just make, make sure we're clear. You do believe in the fact that there are racial disparities of based on these institutions, right? There, well, 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 there are racial disparities do exist in data sets 100%. I want to get to why they exist. Is it because of racism? That's what critical race theorists think. I think that's a simplistic explanation to a multivariate problem. Life is a complex phenomenon, Dr. Ritchie. As you would know, sir, you're a PhD. You had to go through a lot of things to get your PhD. So I think that reducing things, reducing this very complex and multifaceted world and, and a very complex and even more multifaceted human society, human interaction to one answer because those answers have been emblazoned and yeah. sort of seen in the cultural atmosphere sphere is not the best thing to do. If I am wrong and these things end up being the cause of racism, actual racism, then yes, let's fight them, let's get rid of them. But I want to go back to something you said before. The well, well, before you go there, before you yeah. go there, and I will allow you to, to finish your thought. Um, you, critical race theory does not provide a single, a singular answer as far as I apply critical race theory. I do understand that there are some instances where there's data, macro data, that cannot be codified in a racial dynamic. And we may not have access to that data. But what we do have, the access to the data we do have, shows clearly that an overwhelming truth is present. And the overwhelming truth, brother, is that these disparities break down with a racial significance. And yes, you mean? could have meaning when we talk about three to four uh, black women being uh, three to four times more likely to die uh, being pregnant than white women. Well, that breaks down to a racial issue. That's a racial disparity. That racial disparity has something at its core creating that disparity. You have to investigate it. Yes. You're saying that it may be something else, but I'm telling mm -hmm. you, 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 you got the data. At least start there is my point. If you're not willing to start with what the data has concluded, you will never get to unravel the other lenses that you're talking about. And I'm with you, brother. I get it. You're saying let's be multifaceted. Let's make sure we have various lens in order to examine these things. And you do. You need it from an equity standpoint. You need it from a gender bias standpoint. You well, need it from well, all of that. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. You don't believe gender bias exists? Well, I, I, Dr. Richie, I didn't say that, sir. So, but so you don't so believe again, gender bias exists? No, no, I, no, I, I didn't say that, sir. Okay. So, so here's what I'm here's what I'm trying to say, sir. Um, so okay. I think you did something in the course of your response there. So you said that we that the the disparity reflects a problem, a racial problem. But as far as I can see, the line of your reasoning doesn't satisfy how that problem is racist. We haven't gotten there yet. Yes, that's Explain correct. That. A racial a racial disparity does have a context within the context context of race because it is being measured by race. So when we measured black women and the, the disparity between white women, that is something that is being measured by race. But that goes from being something, uh -uh. Uh, a matter of, okay, Dr. Richie, so how is it not true? If we're measuring okay, going to the disparity between the black and white women in mm -hmm. terms of pregnancy, and is that not being measured by race? No, the study okay, was so not. So let me help you understand how this, the study race is, is a factor, though, of course, right? Race, the disparity, is the outcome of the data. So let me bring you back to the study. Well, I know uh, the study examined income, 
healthcare, um, as well as education. Those are non-racial elements. That's right. what the study examined. The study with the New York yes, City sir. Police Department, uh, it only examined the number of arrests, the number of stops, and the number of citations. It did not study it from a racial context. US black individuals are twice as likely to be unemployed than white was a measure once again of experience work-wise, education, um, and also age was put in that variable. And it showed that blacks are less likely to be unemployed, uh, more likely to be unemployed than their white counterparts. Now, none of those studies contextualized in the variable race. It contextualized okay. everything else and said, but the outcome, the disparity, happens to have this amazingly unequal racial conclusion. Okay, well, we can agree that race is indeed involved in understanding the disparity as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. We can agree on that premise. Okay, very good. All right, so when we go beyond that though, you just you, you said a few moments ago, and we and you've kind of, we kind of have gone a lot of different ways this conversation. But you said a few moments ago um, that it, it is important to recognize the disparity exists, and we agree on that point. The disparity does exist, but it's also important to investigate the reason as to why the disparity exists. Exists, and we actually agree with that point. But when you said different lenses, you mentioned gender bias, race by equity, and Dr. Ritchie, respectively, I don't think. That 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 if an inspector goes into a house and just and, and just looks inside the house and never looks outside the house, that he's actually really inspecting the entirety of the house. So the house of critical race theory and critical you know pedagogy and critical concepts include the idea of equity, include a sort of emphasis on gender bias. And I don't think you can actually interrogate and inquire into ideas when you're staying within a single ideological framework. It's anti-intellectual. And all intellectuals need to go outside their framework and question themselves. Introspection and self challenge are the basic precepts of how we acquire knowledge of the world, sir. So well, respectively, I think all of those things you mentioned, equity, gender bias, they can be a part of a broader analysis. But the broader analysis must exist outside of a single umbrella, which is what I think only having those things you mentioned would put us under. So let me um, push back a little bit on that. And, and by the way, I appreciate you being on the show. Um, me I'm happy to be there here. are multiple theories that coexist. Some of them actually overlap. Grounded theory, one of the theoretical constructs that I used for actually my second doctorate. I use grounded theory. Yes, That's not the only theory that I would subscribe to, right? Okay. To explain or analyze or compare data. And now you have to look at it from two data concepts, qualitative comparison, which is your social comparison, and then quantitative comparison, which is your analytical research numbers heavy okay. comparison. Right. We're looking at this data through those comparative models. And when you look at the data through those comparative models, you're not starting with a racial core. You're ending with a race disparity conclusion, but you're not right. starting with a race dynamic. Now, here's what I hear you saying. I hear you telling me that it could be race, it, it, it's on the table, that could be one issue. But you're saying it could also be other issues as well. So here's what yes, I sir. propose to you, brother. Because I've read what you have placed out there on social media. And I think you're doing the conversation a disservice because you know that critical race theory should be included in the lexicon of theoretical frameworks or even practical analysis. It should be one of them. Excuse if you me, say sir. on my show, if you say on my show that race could be involved. Well, okay, so you said the lexicon of theoretical frameworks. That's to me is a composition of words that I'm not entirely sure addresses the core of my propositions. My proposition okay. is that it shouldn't be in the classroom as fact. And that's actually the proposition that but many of the bills- Wait a minute, brother, well, well, I only got yes, a minute, sir, it's not in the, no it's the not. The 1619 project. Sir, uh, it, 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 yes, sir, sir, you're talking about less than 1% of a of curriculum, I'm talking about the, the vast majority. Classrooms. Sir, less than 1% of curriculum was connected to the 1619 project. It is a, and by the way, it's a great project and it's a great curriculum. I stand I by it, but it's less than 1%. Let's talk about the overwhelming percentage, 99 point, 99 point whatever it is that actually teaches, um, that teaches a core educational curriculum, not the foundation of critical race theory, it's not taught. You guys keep coming back to that as if it's taught in K through 12 education and it's not. I just don't understand why y'all keep making that argument. 
Well, sir, again, I've, I've demonstrated to you that the 1619 project uh, is being, it's, it's using methodology, which is directly linked to critical pedagogy. And I think that's a very bad thing because critical pedagogy does not take into account a wide variety of ideas and explanations. It presumes, and this people can source yeah. me, words of that wound, Matsuda, Crenshaw, Delgado, they all say that they presume through their lived experience that all disparities in all areas, housing, education, are racist. And the I reason mean, why they say that is because they as scholars have decided to utilize that as their comparative analysis. But brother, let me right. correct you. Let me correct you on one thing before I go, okay? Yes, when you say the critical race theory is presented as fact, the very word, the very phraseology is theory. Critical race theory. Theory, brother. Yes. Theory. Which means by definition and design of the phrase cannot be fact. It is a theoretical framework to analyze and compare. That's what it is. If I may. Yes, sir, if I may. If you I got may. one minute, go you ahead. Know, you got the last if one. I, if, I, if, if I may, you know, there are plenty of theories that constitute our understanding of the world, which are held as fact. For example, gravitation is one of those theories. So yes, you know, even though a theory itself is supposed to be very contingent and supposed to be very not necessarily certain, there are people who believe the precepts of a theory are true and will teach those precepts as fact. Just because the theory itself may not have the word fact built into it, does not mean people cannot in the material world go through a manner Manifest the ideas of the theory as facts. So let's just be very clear with our words here. All right, brother. I was very clear with the fact that critical race theory, by definition of the phrase, cannot be taught as fact, but as a theoretical framework. I disagree. And scholars have been doing that for many years. And let me say big ups to Dr. Chika Kua, my dissertation chair at Clark Atlanta University, who taught me a lot about CRT. All right, thank you, brother. I appreciate you being on the program. Thank you, Dr. Rich. Appreciate it. Thank you.